Jack them up, boys. I want to talk to you this morning about faithfulness. It is Mother's Day. There is a story of faithfulness in the Bible, and I want to talk about that. Our mothers are faithful um, to our families, to the Lord. Turn to the book of Ruth. Hallelujah. And uh, in, uh, in the book of Ruth, starting in the, if you don't know where Ruth is, it's after Judges. If you have to look in the front, that's okay. It's not a book we refer to a lot. Um, it goes Joshua, Judges, Ruth. And if you don't know, you can ask one of our children that have Holy Ghost boldness because they can quote you the Bible. The books of the Bible. Um, I'm going to read some places. We're not going to, we're, well, of course, we're not going to read the whole book of Ruth this morning. But I'm going to read a lot of the first chapter. And there's a, a story in the first chapter that I think that each one of us should look at and realize there are things that happen in life because we make a move that possibly was not in God's plan, as well as we removed ourselves from the anointing that God wants us to be in. It is very important that we realize. Now, remember that the New Testament tells us all things work together for the good of them that love Him and are called according to His purpose. In that... Our faithfulness to Him and relying on Him, letting Him lead and guide us, cause that outcome for everything that the enemy means for bad to be okay for you and I. Because God will take care of those things. So obedience and how we move with God have a bearing on that. But by the way, if everybody wants to wave... Say, good morning, Kathleen. They are watching by internet this morning. Good morning, uh, her and, and Curtis's family. Um, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went, uh, went to dwell in the country of Moab he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Imelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the names of the two sons were Mahan and Chilon, the Ephratites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. Then Imelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons, and they took wives of the women of Moab, and the name of one of one was Ophrah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Then both Mohan and Chilatan also died. So the women survived her the, the woman survived her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters in law that she might return to the country of Moab. For she had heard the country in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people, giving them bread. Therefore she went out from the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go each on to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. And the Lord grant, it, grant that you each rest, each in the house of her, her husband. So she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. 
Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. And if I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight and would also bear sons, would you wait for them until they were grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. Ophrah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from, the follow, from following you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do to me also, and more also, if anything but death parts you and I. And when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they came to Bethlehem that the city was excited because of them. And Naomi, and the women said, is this Naomi? But she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me back home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth, the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, and returned to the country, from the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. I want to talk about a couple of things here, and, and we can see how faithful Ruth was. She says, I want, I want everything that God has for you to be for me. And in Naomi's eyes, and she changed her name, uh, which also meant Naomi in bitterness is what that name meant. And when she made the statement about that God had come out against her, one of the things that I believe from reading this account and knowing what God tells us to do, well, what he told Abraham, let's look at what he told Abraham. Turn to Genesis. Keep your finger here in Ruth. We'll be coming back. I want you to see what God had told Abraham about the land. And we're just going to, you know, it's way too much to, to try to get, read and go into uh, in, in one morning. But there's a few places. Genesis chapter 12, verse 5 through 8. And at this time, his name was still Abram. Uh, Abram was his original name, Abraham of course, was what God changed it to because it meant the father of many nations uh, in the promises that he made to him. Genesis chapter 12, verse 5 through 8. Then Abraham took Sarai, his wife, or Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired at Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Now God in a few verses before had sent Abraham to the land of Canaan. He said, uh, I'll bless those that bless you. I'll curse those that curse you. But here's where he made him the promise about that land. Abraham passed through the land of the place of Shechem as far as the Terebeth tree of Moriah. And the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent at Bethel on the west of Aiah, on the east. 
And he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Go over to the 13th chapter, verse 14. And we're going to look through 18 there. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him. Now, in the meantime, and so let me stop for just a minute. In the meantime, Abram had gone on to, because there was a famine in the land of Canaan, and God just told him, this is going to be yours, and this is going to be your descendant. So he'd gone on to Egypt uh, for the time of the famine and, famine, and now he's come back into the land, and that's where we, we find him in the 13th chapter. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look to the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give you and to your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise and walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt at the Timorath trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. And to this day, Abram is uh, still uh, buried at, at Hebron. But what I want you to see the picture of in this place, when Naomi and her husband had moved to the land of Moab, they had removed their self from the covering that God had given them by moving to that land. And possibly all of the things, that is, as I look at the promises of God and I look at the things, I, I believe that they had removed their self from the anointing that God had them in, they, the, the sons had lived a short life. They married women that God told them not to marry because they told them to marry in their own, in their own people. So they were supposed to marry Israelites uh, in that. And in, in all of that, but see, look at what God has done. Go back to Ruth and look at what God has done. Even when, it, and it brings a reality of when... Uh, the enemy means something for bad. Even if we've moved to that mistake and we've repented and we've come back into the place and into the anointing that we're supposed to reside in, which is exactly what Naomi did. She went back to her land. If you look, all the people that stayed in the land, they continued to live that God took care of them. He sent bread for them. And when Naomi heard what had happened, she went back. Now the picture I want to get of a mother and, and what she had done is looking at how Naomi treated Ruth, who became her daughter and stayed with her. Uh, she took her under a wing and, uh, and told her many things. We're not going to read all of them today. But she told her that, uh, that she got, God would bless her and show her favor. Told, told her where to go and get uh, barley. And this is where we come in. In the second chapter, verse 8. Uh, Ruth has gone and done exactly what her mother-in-law said to do. Ruth was found faithful in everything that she had promised. She says, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And she became, at that point, a Jew. She went through everything that, that she needed to be. She came into uh, the Jewish bel uh, belief and, and truly made... Uh, Jehovah to be her God. Then when Naomi had sent her, uh, she sent her to one of their kinsmen to find barley, and that's where we find her. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, will you, will you not? Do not go and glean from another field, nor go from here, but stay close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field where they reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels to drink from which the young men have drawn. 
So she fell on her face and bowed down to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? Now listen to what his answer was because it is such an uh, awesome answer about how God looks at each one of us. I believe he spoke truly not only from a, a human standpoint, but the place that God looks at each one of us in faithfulness, in obedience. She, Ruth had been faithful and obedient in everything she had done. When she was told, when she, Naomi told her to do something because she looked up at Naomi not only as her mother, but she also looked at her as her guide into her, her God. Because she had told her, I'll make your God my God. Boaz answered and said to her, it, verse 11, It has been fully reported to me all that you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of her husband. And how you left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and came to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work. A full reward has been given to you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. You can look at Psalm 91, which was written after that, and you realize that what David talked about was exactly the same thing that Boaz told Ruth. You came to God and made him your refuge, came under his wing of refuge. So Boaz didn't just look at her as she was being a, a good daughter-in-law. He looked at her as really following the true God, and he found, she found favor in his eyes because she came to Israel to take refuge under the wing of God. And God showed favor through Boaz. God showed favor to Ruth through all, throughout all of her life because of that. Then she said, Let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoke kindly to your maidservant though I'm not like one of your maidservants. Go on to the third chapter in verse 8. Now, Ruth has gone home and she's told Naomi everything that's happened. And she's told her how Boaz treated her, what Boaz said. If you look at the, uh, the King James... Uh, make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself. I will wait. If, if you uh, realize what Ruth had done in making God Jehovah her God and doing everything that not only the, was biblically correct, but she did everything that was the, the standards of the people that she had gone to and she didn't show her Moab heritage or that she was a Moabite. Moabititis. And I got that all t tongue twisted. But in the second chapter, or the third chapter, in verse 8, it says, Now it happened at midnight. Now Naomi has sent her, told her that Boaz was a close relative, so you go and ask him about taking you as a wife. What did she do again? She did something that Naomi had suggested. She did what was the tradition. What the, what the tradition in the Old Testament in Israel was that she would go, that if uh, a man died, then the brother was supposed to marry him. If the brother wasn't there, then uh, it passed to the next relative and it went on. And, and so that's where uh, Naomi had sent Ruth. Now it happened at midnight that the man, this is uh, chapter 3 verse 8, was startled and turned himself and there was a woman lying at his feet. And he said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing for you are a close relative. Then he said, blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter. For you have shown more kindness at the end than in the beginning. In that you did not go after young men, whether rich, poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. We look at our mothers and we realize that 
our mothers as we look up to them and we realize what they've done. They're virtuous women. So was Ruth. Ruth was found faithful. She was found virtuous in the sight of not only her peers, but she was found virtuous in the sight of God. It's important for us to remember that as we go into the New Testament that we look in, in God re, call, called the, the mothers and the, the daughters in, uh, to be virtuous women, the grandmothers to be virtuous women to take care of. And, and I believe that when we look at Ruth, we see such a great example of everything that God intends each one of our mothers to be and how they lead and guide and how they watch over their family. And husbands, as, as we support our wives in their decisions and we help make decisions with them, we have to remember that God looks at them as virtuous daughters, uh, just exactly like Boaz talked about Ruth here. Uh, back in uh, verse 13. Stay this night. Uh, no, or go to verse 12. Now it's true that I am a close relative. However, there is a relative closer than I. Stay this night, and in the morning it shall be that I will perform the duty of a close relative for you. Good. Let him do it. But if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you. As the Lord lives, lie down until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, and she arose before anyone could recognize another. Then he said, Do not let it be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Also he said, Bring the shawl that is on you, and hold it. And she held it, and he measured six ephods of barley, and laid it at, on her feet. And then she went to the city, so she came to her mother-in-law, and said, Is that you, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her, and she said, Six ephods of barley he gave me, for he said, Do not go empty-handed to your mother-in-law. Then she said, Sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out, for the man will not rest until he has concluded this day. And one of the things that we realize in each one of us as we do what we're supposed to do, that we should not rest until we've done what God has told us to do. We should continually be strong, continually walk in faithfulness. And, and I, I'm not any different than anybody else. Sometimes we get in a position that we look and, and it seems like things get so big. But I will tell you that when we stay faithful to what God says, He'll provide everything that He says He'll provide. He'll give us everything that He says He'll give us. Even if it looks like it's not going to happen. You know, Ruth could have walked away from that place and go, well, you know, I'm probably not going to get Boaz because it's going to be that other guy is going to take him. And Boaz, if you go on, you, you read in this story that, or this account that Boaz went to him and he said, no. You do it, and Boaz went ahead and did it. Now look what God does to, to faithfulness and, looks, and for uh, virtuous people. We, as long as we're faithful and we're obedient, God moves in a place not only that He can bless us, but He'll use us. You look all the way back at, at uh, Rahab before she was married uh, to Sa Salmon. And Salmon, Rahab was a, was, was a harlot. Uh, she was uh, one of the Canaanites that lived in Jericho. Uh, but she honored God and honored his people by hiding them and not turning them over. And then she came out, she was saved in Jericho. She married uh, Salmon, who was Boaz's mother, she see, she did exactly, she was an outsider. God will take outsiders. 
that were faithful, that honor him, that turn to him and use them. Because faithfulness is what God looks for. And, and, and on Mother's Day in this, in this account of Ruth and her faithfulness, then we look at Ruth and she, uh, she bore a son who was Obed, who was Jesse's father, who was David's father, and we know the rest of the story. We, we look at both of the, the women that turned to God and that were faithful to God. Even Rahab was faithful to God because she honored his people and then turned to God when, when his people came in. Left her gods, Ruth left the gods that she had been raised with and honored only God. And Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was born through both of these women that had turned to God and been faithful to God and honored God. And so we see that even today, you and I, because of the virtuous women, because of the women that put God first in their life, were faithful to what he said and moved, you and I get to enjoy salvation through Jesus Christ. And so we can look at how this chain affects generation after generation after generation. We can look at the promise that God made to Abraham that even as God told Abraham the dust of the earth and the, and the sand, that, that your descendants will, uh, that all the earth will be blessed in you. All the way from Abraham to Rahab to Ruth to David to Jesus Christ to you and I today. We have enjoyed those blessings because of the faithfulness of a, of a woman to say, I will be, make your God my God and I will make everything that you do, mine. And I honor our mothers for the things. I look at our children and as uh, Miss Gloria prayed over all the children this morning and, and, and I look, and listened to, to what she prayed and the things. These kids have boldness because they have mothers that will raise them as spirit-filled children and spirit-filled homes and teach them what the Bible says. So we look at the faithfulness and how it's coming into the next generation and, and what will happen uh, if Jesus doesn't come back first is their kids, because of your faithfulness, will be raised the same way. And we look at the boldness uh, that the Holy Spirit places in them and how they become everything that God has called them to be. And we look at, it, it goes all the way back to Ruth. Those generations will be blessed because of a, a daughter that said, your God is my God, and I will be faithful to you. And I, I want to encourage you that to not only stay faithful, but to continue to stay faithful. Continue to be who God's called you to be, so that we can. Mothers, there's going to be times that it may seem like, where's God in all this? Don't leave the spot. Look at what happened to Naomi's family. They left the spot that God had called them to. And, and you know, and praise God, Ruth came out of that. Because all things work together for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. I believe Ruth was called according to his purpose. I believe you and I are called according to his purpose. And if we stay faithful... God will show Himself faithful in all things and continue to show Himself faithful. Father, we thank you this day for the opportunity that you give us to live in faithfulness, to watch what you do, to love and to guide you, uh, be guided by you. Father, I pray today over this entire congregation that, Father, you will cause them to be filled with your spirit to listen. That the mothers will have a special anointing on them. Not just this day, but from this day forward. That they'll ha have even bigger God ideas for their children. Father, we love you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor and power in the mighty name of Jesus. And by his blood, amen.
As you've watched today, you've had the opportunity to hear the word preached. And as you apply that word, you'll get victory in your life. But it has to start someplace. It has to start first with a commitment to Jesus Christ as making him your Savior and then making him the Lord of your life. Paul said this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Well, the word of faith that Paul preached is found in the next verses. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with a heart one believes unto righteousness. So it goes like this. All you have to do is actually say, Jesus is my Savior and he is my Lord. So I'm going to invite you to say this with me this morning. Uh, and if you want to bow your head, you can bow your head. The Bible says that pray watching. And so it's okay to keep your eyes open and, and watch. But let's say this together. Say, Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I confess those sins today. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of those sins and to come into my heart and be my Savior. And I commit today that I will make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for salvation today. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that today for the first time, no matter what time of the day or night it is, uh, welcome to the family. Welcome to knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now from this day on, make Him the Lord of your life. And as you make Him the Lord of your life, you will find out what God can do in you and through you. Also, if you've watched this broadcast, we want you to know that you can become a partner with this ministry. As you become a partner with this ministry, some of the things that you've seen throughout this uh, presentation... Uh, the buckouts and, and things like that, then you become a part of that kind of ministry. And there's many people that come to know Jesus. We have offices in Nigeria and Togo, have four churches in Nigeria, one in, in Togo. And uh, we want you to know that you become a part of each and everything that this ministry does when you become a partner. You can see the information right there on your screen so that you're able to become a covenant partner with us. And as you do, we want you to know that we pray over each and every one of your offerings so that God will multiply it back to your hands according to his word. His word says in Luke 6, 38, that he gives back, pressed down, shaken together, running over to make room for more. The New Living Translation says whatever measure you use in giving large or small, it'll be used to measure what is given back to you. So we want you to know that God loves you He'll take care of you, and he'll multiply the seed that you sow in this ground with this ministry. Remember that Jesus is Lord, and Jesus loves you, and so do we.